Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to this week's Warner Dev Blog. This one is fairly long and it's a lot of text, so there won't be a lot of pictures up in the background, so this is very much basically a podcast. I mean, these generally are a podcast, but just an extra warning this week that they haven't put up a lot of images to go with all of this wall of text. So they start off by saying, hello commanders, it's that festive time of year again. Shortly we'll be entering the Christmas holiday break. This means no more dev blogs for two weeks. The Ugen Systems team will be back in full force in 2024. And as this is the last dev blog of the year, we still have plenty of interesting things to share, so let's go. The overall title of this dev blog is Divisional House Cleaning and Happy Holidays. So, for the foreseeable future of Army General, we all know you'll miss us dearly during our break, especially our regular soon updates about Army General. I think they're taking the mickey out of themselves a bit there. While we understand your frustration, we want to ensure our new mode is up to scratch in all the important areas. We are keen to avoid pushing something that turns out to be incomplete, bug ridden or worse, not fun. We are working on several major updates to Warner, which will follow on shortly. Currently, the team is also in the process of testing and improving every aspect of the Bruderkrieg Army General campaign, from the AI to preventing cheesy tactics and updating the voice acting. As all the data is intermixed, we can't release one without the other. Our strategic mode is a massive new feature and in very much so active development. We won't share potential launch day or news on when to expect Army General until we are absolutely sure we can deliver. So keep tight, Commanders. I don't know if that's an Americanism, but in the UK we would say hold tight rather than keep tight. Oh well, moving on. But then the team is not only being busy with Army General, one of the other things that's happening in Eugen's workshop is the upcoming major rebalance of our existing divisions. We call it a bit of divisional house cleaning, and we can lift the tip of the veil on what to expect. And so we have a new heading, divisional house cleaning. We are happy with the current roster of units and divisions for Warno, but there is always room for improvement. For instance, such as the upcoming new veterancy overhaul, which you can read more about in the other dev blogs. With all the units done and all divisions released over a year, including new unannounced ones, plus new mechanics, meta balance sweeps, individual units and more, we decided it was a good time to make a general balancing pass. This means that the Ugen team is going through all the divisions to fix balance issues and give each one a more pronounced flavour or playstyle. Expect some of our more infamous units to be toned down, and at the same time, unsung soldiers will be beefed up, including slot allocation and shifting specific units from one formation to the other. All divisions will keep their divisional historical order of battle. This will not change formations attached to the divisions to fill certain gaps or to differentiate the battle groups might be moved to other divisions or removed completely. This can be a pretty thorough rehaul. However, one thing we can promise is that no unit will be removed from Warno, instead they will just be reshuffled. I think just to clarify here, I think when they're talking about individual units, they will always be in the game. However, some formations may be removed from particular divisions or the game as necessary, but they will keep the units in somewhere that were in that formation. Anyhow, moving on, the following is a preview of what's to come. Some changes are still in progress, while others require testing. Keep that in mind. So, let's start with an obvious candidate, they say. The Soviet Airborne Assault Troops of the 35th Guards uh, Assault Brigade. I'm not going to try and say the uh, Russian version. When we first launched our Airborne Division, we feared they may be too lightly equipped to stand on their own in Warner's Battlefield. Thus, we attached their heavier ground elements, chiefly armour, in the mistaken belief our paratroopers needed outside help. We already put the American 82nd Airborne Division on a tank diet, but now it's the turn of the 35th Guards Air Assault Brigade to slim down. Less armour, more paratrooper. The Soviet division will be streamlined to represent a more accurate order of battle. It will focus on its own equipment and less on other detachments. In practical terms, it means the division will lose all non-airborne armor and related units. T-64, all versions, BRM-1, Mot Razvedka with their Razvedka BMP-1. 
This also means some changes to the division's unit category in tank. One of the two point slots will be scrapped entirely, but in both Helo and Recon, a three point slot will be made a cheaper two point slot. Furthermore, as will be the case with every other airborne division for our upcoming divisional rework, they will lose their fixed forward operating base, aka the FOB unit. Of course, it wouldn't make much sense to have a fixed structure filled with a pile of supplies when dealing with paratroopers dropping behind enemy lines. New units, the 35th Guards Air Assault Brigade will not only see the effect of the cutting axe, a new unit will also be deployed, the Nona K 120mm dual purpose mortar. While designated a mortar, it looks more like a small howitzer, which can fire in both indirect roll or used as a direct fire gun with either HE rounds or heat rounds. Meanwhile, the 2S9 Nona S from the same battle group will also receive a HE direct fire capacity. This ability is further extended to the 2S23 Nona SVK of the 27th MSD, as they share the same gun. And to compensate for the removal of the FOB, the division will get access to the light Gaz 66B supply truck. This particular vehicle will feature a reskin of the existing transport variant, plus to be able to feature heavy recon infantry, a new helicopter-borne Razvedka DSH will deploy, but without the support of the BMP-1. On a personal note, I will say I don't necessarily agree with all the changes being made here. I'm just reading them out because it's what's in the dev blog. The 82nd Airborne is the next subheading, so it's the next to get the treatment. Much the same as their Soviet counterparts, the American paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division will be streamlined to follow a purer table of organization and equipment. This means that the attached elements of the 194th Armored Brigade will have to go. All the non-airborne armored elements will be taken out from the division, the M1IP tanks, the M577, the M125 mortar, and the Bradley CFV. The division will also lose its FOB. A bit of a reshuffle and brand new units, the 82nd Airborne will also see a reshuffle of slots between tank and recon, with the latter category seeing some additional love. Two new units will deploy there, the new M551 ACAV, also known as Two Boxers, this version without the ATGM but with additional MGs, here put to use in the recon role. And surprise, a brand new unit, unfortunately we couldn't model it on time for this dev blog, but expect it to be showcased in the first one of 2024. Next up are the 8th Infantry Division. While the 8th Infantry Division might not be as overpowered in our eyes, it suffers from a different malady. This battle group has it all and does it all well. Consequently, it has turned into a grey and shapeless division, with an overabundance of specific units with no real defect. You'll recall the 8th Infantry was delivered with Warno's second milestone. This update was used to tease the upcoming German units. The Germans have now been teased enough, being featured with their own splendid divisions. We decided to get rid of the Germans in this division, all of them. Furthermore, the 8th Infantry Division will also be thoroughly reduced in light helicopter power, with several of the OH-58 variants being either limited or removed entirely. Rangers lead the way. Again, not all doom and gloom. While the 8th Infantry might have been referred to as that US division with Germans, it will now be known as the Rangers Division. We decided to rework the existing Ranger squads and expand them. Having made a new Ranger unit set for Army General, reusing these in the 8th Infantry Division during our balancing sweep would make the most sense. Existing Ranger squads have been expanded from 6 soldiers to 9 men per squad. Their 84 has been replaced by the law, however. The new Rangers Dragon has also been added. This features the same organization as the first unit, but contains a Dragon 2 ATGM as its anti-tank weapon. And then finally, there will be the new Rangers Leader, a squad which are six-man command squad with a sniper rifle and an M67 recoilless rifle. Each new Ranger unit will be available as one card with either Humvee or helicopter transports. In addition to the above, the new M163 CS will be featured. This is a cheap and radarless variant of the self-propelled anti-air vehicle found in the AA tab. This unit represents how it could have been used against flying targets and in a direct fire ground roll. Next up is the Territorial Commando Sud. Let's fix our gaze on the support divisions next, beginning with the West German 
TKS. According to our server stats, this division is multiplayer's ugly duckling and rare to be played and even rarer to win. We will buff this division by adding more units from the attached French 4E division Aeromobile. This means the VLRA Milan, which is the same forward deployment unit as found in the French 11E division. The VLRA 20mm with forward deployment again found in the 11th E division. And the addition of the P4 Jeeps as a transport for the Milan 2 teams. In real life, the French 4E division Aeromobile used a different model. The Overland, see picture below, which I will include in the background, which is identical in the role and performance. One three-point air slot has been made cheaper and is now two points. We'll keep an eye on the above changes to see if the Territorial Commando Sud are a bit more viable on the online battlefields. If it doesn't work, we'll look at additional ways to boost it. And then finally, the Kampfgruppe de Arbeitsklasse or the KDA, is the East German Support Division. It will also see some love, but less for balance and more for flavour. We tried to focus on its reserve nature, decreasing the importance of the more standard regular units. This new structure is modelled on Army General's Reserve Divisions. What does it mean? Well, the Panzerjäger and the Motsuchen SMG infantry squads will be removed from the battle group. To make up for this loss, it will receive extra Reservisten, as well as one card of the new Reservisten Führer. This means the KDA will represent better the second wave mobilization divisions within the East German National Volks Army. We will make more changes to the division as soon as they are ready. This includes the new T-54B and the new ZPU-4 Light AA. Both of these units have been modeled for Army General and will now find their way into this division. Then we have more sneak peek. As we teased you with the Spartan ZB298 and Warrior Command last week, we've been pursuing our modelling effort towards a British army with this cute, fully amphibious Alvis Stalwart to be introduced soon. Then they have the subheading until next week. What they actually mean is until next time, because it's going to be a few weeks before the next dev blog. That's all for now. The new year is shaping up to be very exciting indeed, and we can't wait to tell you about the good stuff coming to Warno. From the whole UGen system team, we wish you happy holidays and all the best for 2024. Expect us to be back in the second week of January. And that's everything for this week. Uh, you can all take now the time for all of that to sink in, I'm sure. Obviously, do feel free to uh, discuss it in the comments below. Please keep it civil, of course. The devs do swing by from time to time and read the comments on the channel. Although I will have a series of casts for Warno going up over the holiday period, I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, however you celebrate, and wish you all the very best for the new year. There will be lots and lots of exciting stuff coming up for gaming in 2024, RTS and otherwise, not just to do with Warno. See you all then.